Mr. Jones? Uh, here. Ms. Mount? Here. Ms. Rumbaugh? Here. <coughs> Mr. Shockley? Here. Mr. Sweeney? Here. And Ms. Wheeler? Here. We do have a quorum and no one is calling in. Um, regarding item number three is the synopsis of the last meeting. Madam Chair, I'll move for the adoption. Thank you, Councilman Shockley. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Bowen. Any discussion on the motion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The synopsis is approved. Item number four, reports of the mayor. We'll <clears throat> welcome Mayor Williams. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I meant to say this earlier, it's great just to be, see, to be able to see faces <laughs> and not yeah. figure out behind the mask. This is absolutely wonderful. Um, the spring paving was recently completed. The list included 40 paving projects totaling $1.15 million and accounting for 6.3 miles. $950,000 in paving projects were completed in the fall bringing this fiscal, year's, this fiscal year's total to $2.1 million. The city has paved 51.79 miles of roads totaling $14,466,255 since 2014. And I won't go on as I did before and just keep on going about, we're gonna change the way that we do this working together but it's something that each of you will have something that's predictable and that you can point to in your district as to when a certain street will be will be paved and uh, we'll work to, to get that I've been working with uh, Mr. Dial and Mr. Insco on strategies as to how to move forward and we won't waste time on this now because we're going to have plenty of time to work on that later um, Councilman Jones, this will be something that will catch your attention given our meeting immediately following this. Uh, a litter abatement program has been launched um, last week in an effort to give back to the community. The city has allocated some of the funding provided by the 150th Anniversary Fund to support this initiative. These funds covered the cost of ordering 200 litter sticks 250 pairs of gloves sourced locally from general building supply and 10,000 garbage bags. This program is designed to serve as a collaborative effort among various organizations, businesses, civic groups, neighborhood associations, and faith-based organizations. They're invited to host cleanups by signing up via email at, and this is the email address, cleanup all one word, cleanup, C-L-E-A-N-U-P, at HuntingtonWV.gov. Cleanup at HuntingtonWV.gov with a date and time. And with supplies at the ready, the city of Huntington will arrange providing volunteers with the materials they need to facilitate the cleanup. From there, the trash will then be hauled away at no cost by the city of Huntington's Public Works Department. The program will allow up to two community cleanups per week, and volunteers must agree to pile bags of litter at a central location determined by the Public Works Department in the cleanup area before it begins. And as I indicated, immediately following this <coughs> meeting, there's uh, a committee meeting, and we'll have a full conversation about that at that time. It's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Tyson Compton to give a brief presentation to city council members about the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Tyson Compton. <clears throat> Welcome, Mr. Compton. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Madam Chair, honorable members of council, uh, I am Tyson Compton, the president of the <clears throat> Huntington Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And with so many new members being on, on um, Council, in fact, uh, I know three of you are pretty familiar with what we do. We've got a former Thank board you. member, a current board member, and even a former employee. Uh, but some of the newer members, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of who we are and what we do. Uh, CVBs were actually created in 1985 by an act of uh, the state legislature, and we are completely funded by the room tax 
on hotels in the city and the county. And that means every time you stay in a hotel, you pay the room fee, the state tax, and then there's a 6% room tax. 3% of that goes to the city or county in which the hotel is located. The other 3% comes to us, and that's the funding that we use to do our job, which basically is twofold. And, in fact, one reason a lot of people aren't familiar with us is that so much of our work is done outside the area. And that is what we're meant to do, is to work outside Huntington and Cabell County to make people aware of who we are. And then once we bring them here, make them aware of everything we have for them to see and do. So we work with the casual leisure traveler, bus groups, um, one area that we've really seen grow lately is uh, sporting events, especially youth sporting events, and then meetings and conventions. Uh, we're located in Heritage Station downtown, and we have, um, 10 years ago when we moved there, we wanted to create an experience for the visitor. So that rather than just go to a stale office and pick up material, they're coming into an inviting place, which in itself is, uh, we think, is a destination. So they can visit uh, with the uh, liaison, pick up their information. Then we sublet space on our ground floor to a bakery so they can go over and have a snack. And then uh, also in our main floor is the Red Caboose, which is our gift shop. So if you ever have friends or family or you yourself are looking for uh, Huntington or West Virginia themed items, uh, you know, postcards, magnets, you know, all of those souvenir type things, they can find them at the Red Caboose. And we're pretty proud of that because not only are we offering those items, but 90% of what we offer is consigned from local artists. So we're helping them to make a living while they're showing off their, their products. Um, so, um, I won't go everything over everything that's in your packet, but just a few things that I just want to point out for you. You're can certainly look over at your leisure. Uh, but this is our visitor's guide, which we put out a new one every year. And this contains, to the best of our ability, every hotel, attraction, retail outlet, and restaurant in Huntington, Cabell County, and now that we're working with Wayne County and Wayne County as well. So this is the piece when people contact us and say they're coming to Huntington for a visit. This is what we send them so that they can help plan their visit. We also find that we have a lot of people who are considering or have just moved here come in and pick up this information as well because it's very helpful to them. Um, in the back of that um, packet is, and I would really encourage you, this is just a rough copy of what we call our events list. This is emailed out every Thursday uh, at no charge, and it lists all of the events, again, to the best of our ability. Uh, that are coming up for the next 10 days. So if you do not receive this, uh, my contact information is in here. Just send me an email. We'll get you signed up. But this is a great way to keep up with what's going on in the community. Then on the other side, you'll see our annual report. Uh, this is for last year. As uh, we end our fiscal year in June, we'll be creating a new one of those. Um, I've enclosed a current list of our board members. Um, five of which are appointed by county commission, five by our membership, one by Wayne County, and as you're aware, recently you uh, reappointed five members as well. Uh, our mission statement is there. And then this um, sheet, I thought you might enjoy, in the most recent session of state legislature, they passed what they're calling the CVB oversight bill. So this will give you a real good explanation of how we operate and what the state is looking for us as far as requirements. And then um, in the back there are a few different um, pages that talk about economic um, development. And really that's what we consider ourselves. We're, we are an economic engine because we're bringing these people into the area and having them spend money in our hotels, our attractions, our restaurants, et cetera. So just to give you an example of what that can mean as far as dollars coming into the community, there's about four examples there. And you'll see, if you read through that, even with a small meeting uh, with 60 people, you're bringing a nice amount of money into the community. And then you go all the way up to, um, I'm sure you're familiar with the big soccer tournaments that we've been having in Barbersville since 2000. Nine, I think, was the first one. I mean, that's a multi-million dollar um, economic impact to the community. So 
we are really um, working toward um, increasing our youth sporting events because we find that those are doing very well. We're a great destination for those. Um, it used to be, before I was in this business, um, you know, I might go downtown and it would be really crowded, it'd be hard to find a parking space or there's a wait at the restaurant, you know, you get a little aggravated. Now I get so excited when I see that because those people are out there spending money in our community and it's a great thing. So that's it, unless anybody has any questions. Again, you've got my card. You feel free to reach out me to <coughs> me at any time, but if you have questions tonight, I'm happy to answer them. Chairman. Any questions? Yes, Councilman Jackson. What, what, what are some of the ways that you look to improve uh, the, the sporting events you mentioned, if, if, if you can speak on that at this time? <clears throat> sure. Um, one, one way to do that is if we were to have uh, a sports commission mm -hmm. that is bringing together all, you know, our high school, our different venues, the hotel, the CVB, um, a lot of these events are looking for what are called <coughs> bid fees. So in order to attract the event here, we commit to X amount of money to get them to come. Um, and we look at that as an investment because generally what you're going to get back in spending in the community is going to be much more than that, than that bid fee. Um, so facilities are very important. Um, and right now during uh, COVID, we found out that people still want to travel. They still want to partake in these events, but they want smaller destinations. You know, in the past, we've committed, uh, uh, competed with larger communities. Now that competition is going to go down a little bit because these folks are still a little concerned about going back to the bigger, bigger cities and bigger destinations. Okay. I, I just like it. I, I, was, I met with a young lady today that was talking about archery and, and how big that is. And you just, you know, I always just go straight to baseball and soccer and basketball, but there's a right. whole bunch of sports that we could get involved in that, that people – are really uh, interested in. You're so exactly I, I like right. That in idea. fact, in 2019, we had our first archery competition, okay. West Virginia State competition okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions on the left? Any questions on my right? Councilman Bailey? Comment. Please, sir. I have uh, had the pleasure of working with Tyson for many years, and uh, he does an outstanding job, and we, we're very lucky to have him. Uh, in, in fact, I voted to hire him years ago when he applied for the and, job. And thank you for that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so he does an outstanding job, and like I say, we're real lucky to have him. So thank you, Ty. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's definitely a team effort. Anything else? Councilman Madam Anderson? Chairman, uh, two things. One is very nice. Guy and Dot, very nice. I, I looked this over, and I think I know this guy, too. So <laughs> it's, uh, but it's very nice. There's a lot of information in here. It's it's really well done. Thank and then the other the other point I wanted to make was the visitor's guide. And you made the point that we still mail these out, which is good because, you know, when I call and, and I try to get a visitor's guide for somewhere and they tell me it's all online, I go, I don't I don't I don't want to. I don't want to do that. So I like that we're still mailing these. That's great. great. We do have a nice website. We're very proud of that, and a lot of people do visit the website but there's still a lot of people like me you know i'm still one of those who reads the newspaper i like the guide in hand I like so. the tangible stuff yeah yeah and we try our goal is to respond when somebody calls or uh, contacts us over the internet that we respond within 24 to 48 hours so they get that in plenty of time keep up the good work thank you anything else Thank you so very much. All We're right, delighted to have heard from you this evening and appreciate all you do to, to further Huntington on the global stage. Thank you very much. And if Thank people you. have ideas, feel free to contact me at any time. We're always open to new ideas. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Tyson. Thanks, Tyson. <clears throat> all right, item five is a resolution 2021-R36. Ms. Adkins. A resolution of council authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract to make a grant to the Cabell County Library Board. <coughs> Motion to adopt. Council I'll second. Woman. Thank you, Councilman Shockley. Councilwoman Rumbaugh moves. Councilman Shockley seconds. And we welcome back the mayor. Madam Chair, members, uh, you will recall during our budget deliberations, you approved a $45,000 appropriation for the city of Huntington to the Cabell County Library. And I have been advised by our council that um, state law requires that if 
the city of Huntington or the a municipality is going to be providing a direct appropriation to uh, to uh, the library system that the uh, has to be a written agreement indicating said appropriation and it has to be authorized by the governing body hence we are here not just to have the the um, We've already had the budget approved, but now this makes this real, if you will. <laughs> Excellent. I like being real. <laughs> Thank you very much. Does anyone have um, any questions for the mayor? No? All right, Mrs. Adkins, was there any public comment on this? No, ma'am. Thank you. Councilman Shockley, did finance meet? Yeah, administration and finance met and forwarded this to full council a favorable recommendation. Excellent. Any further discussion? Well, then we will vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the resolution is approved. Item six is good and welfare. Mrs. Adkins, were any items submitted by the public? No, ma'am. Thank you. Then, um, fellow council members, I'll begin on my left. Anyone on the left? Anything for good and welfare? Okay. On my right? Just one thing. Councilman um, Anderson. I'm sure some of you have seen some of the pictures coming out of District 9. Public Works continues to clean up. The mayor has been very helpful. And uh, I'd like to thank both of them. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. And Councilman Bailey. I would like to thank the Westmoreland Women's Club for the dinner invitation that they sent me last week. and. Uh, it was a wonderful thing, and uh, let us not ever forget that Westmoreland is a big part of Huntington. Here, here. Anything else on my right? No? All right. Then um, uh, thank you each for a, a productive meeting. I do want to say uh, hello and get well to Councilwoman Johnson. You are missed, and we'll look forward to your return. Um, I'll remind everyone that we don't meet again as a full council until June the 14th. There, there's an extra week in May, and, uh, and, and it falls funny in June. So don't come back <laughs> uh, until the 14th. And with that, I will look for a motion. So moved. 